Hello everyone, it's episode 3 of Trini Carnival Eats and I'm making flower pilori. Pilori is the perfect snack to eat while you're at a fete or you're chipping on the road carnival Monday and Tuesday. This type of pilori is usually made by street food vendors and it's made with flour, salt, turmeric, a leavening agent like yeast or baking powder and water. The pilori I grew up eating at home was made mainly with split peas with a little bit of flour added to it. To start, I'm sifting some flour into a basin. Here I have some yeast, salt and sugar, my sifted flour, some turmeric powder, hot pepper, garlic and bandana. And I'm also using a half ripe mango to make the chutney or dipping sauce. Add the yeast, salt, sugar and turmeric to the flour. I'm also adding some chopped pimento and bandana for a pop of color and some extra flavor. Now add some lukewarm water and mix until the batter is just a little bit thicker than pancake batter. And I'm using 5 cups of flour and 4 cups of water. And if you live in a cold or dry climate, you may need to use a little more water to get this consistency. And if you live in a warmer place, then you might need less water. Beat the batter against the bowl, kind of like you're slapping it. And this is going to give you a really nice smooth batter and it's going to give you a nice soft and fluffy pilori. You can use your hands or a spoon to do this. And this is the consistency that you're looking for. Now set it in a warm place and let it rise for about 30 minutes to an hour until it doubles in size. If you live in a colder climate, this might take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. If you live in a warm place like Trinidad, then it's going to take about 30 minutes. While the batter rises, I'll peel the mango and make the chutney. I like these mangoes that are just about to turn ripe, so it's still firm and it has some sweetness and it's just slightly yellow. I'm cutting it into smaller pieces so it's easier to blend. Add the mango, garlic, pepper, bandana, salt, sugar, lime juice and water to a blender or chopper and blend it until smooth. I like mine slightly chunky so I won't blend it all the way. Lime juice is optional here but it keeps the chutney fresh and it also brings out the natural sweetness of the mango. Here's that amazingly delicious raw mango chutney ready to be dipped by some hot pilori. Now let's fry the batter to make the pilori. 
Grab some butter and squeeze it through your thumb and index finger into a pot of hot oil. My oil is at 320 degrees Fahrenheit. To drop these in, make sure your hands are dipped in oil or water to prevent the batter from sticking. Now, if you're accustomed to cooking and frying stuff, then go ahead and use the water. If not, use the oil, because I don't want any oil splattering up on you and burning you. Once the pilori gets a nice golden brown color, remove them from the hot oil and place it onto a lime tray or a basin to drain the excess oil. Mine fried for about 5 to 8 minutes. If your oil temperature is too low, the pilori will go flat and it'll absorb too much oil. If it's too high, the outside will cook too quickly and then the insides are going to be raw. So that's why I like to use a thermometer to measure the temperature of the oil. Continue frying the rest of the pilori and be very careful. One of them actually popped open and my entire right arm is covered in painful burns right now. So I got about 60 pilori with 5 cups of flour so if you wanted to increase the recipe size or decrease it then you'll have an idea how to go about doing that. The pilori is crispy on the outside and soft and fluffy on the inside just like I like it. Here I'm trying to replicate how my favorite pilori vanda assembles her pilori. I'm drizzling some boiled mango and tamarind chutney on top as well as this peppery bandana sauce I made and the raw mango chutney. Oh my god, I wish you all could smell this right now. Was it worth it to get the pain from all these burns? Definitely. Now I'll be real with y'all, this isn't very healthy to eat every single day, so just be mindful of that. You can have a little snack now and again, you know, once a month make a little pilori and have a few, but this is not something to be eating every day. Enjoy it in small amounts. When I was going to primary school, I enjoyed the best pilori under the carrot shed during recess. It was either served on greaseproof paper or in a bag drenched with all the chutneys. Do you remember this? Thank you so much again for joining me in the kitchen for another Carnival Eats episode. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't. Make sure you're following me on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok at Taste of Trinbago. I usually post more regularly there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Keep well and stay safe and healthy. Until next time. And in the future, I will be sharing the traditional pilori recipe that I grew up on. So stay tuned for that. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!